promotion of college football, it's kind of this weekend is almost like the battle of the network stars. I mean, <laughs> are you surprised at, at, at what uh, the game has become and the coverage of it? Um, I don't think so. I mean, it, this country loves college football. Um, you know, the NFL obviously is as is, is big as it gets. And to me, college football is just a step beneath it. So uh, there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of passion. Um, I think what adds to it is a subjective analysis. So I think there's a lot of arguments. And it's, yeah. it's just for, makes for fun, uh, fun TV. So, no. And when you get Ohio State, who's having such a big year, and Penn State, who's having a great year, and you put them together on the same weekend, you know, a lot of people are going to be tuned in to check it out. What do you think these two teams are constantly playing each other so close? I, I just think it's a testament to really both teams and the consistency that they have. Um, you know, what Urban Meyer was able to create and now what Ryan Day is, is continuing is, is incredible. And I don't know if James Franklin really gets the credit he deserves for, I mean, just think about where Penn State was five or six years ago to where they've been these last three or four years. So uh, I'm, I'm, as a college football fan, I think it's great that Penn State is a team that's kind of hovering around the top 10. And uh, they've really battled Ohio State as well as anybody in, in Big Ten play these last three years. So it's going to be, I think it'll be a fun game. Obviously, Chase Young will be back tomorrow. What do you yeah. expect out of him? And how do you think uh, maybe sitting out two games will change his game tomorrow? Man, I think we're all anxious to see him back um, two weeks to really heal up and, and rest up. You know, last year he played on two sprained ankles mo most of the year. Now he's been fresh and healthy all year. I saw him last night at practice, had a, uh, had a chance to talk to him for, uh, for a little bit. I, I, I hope Penn State avoids third and six or longer because he is really amped up. And he's always good, but I think he's got a little bit more motivation, a little bit more energy to him, if you can imagine that. Um, so, you know, like I said, if Penn State is it'd be in their best interest to get out of those third and long situations because otherwise Chase is going to have another big night. What do you see? What is the key matchup? I mean, is it Penn State trying to limit that run game or is it? Uh... Well, I, I think there's a, a few different matchups. I, I think the, the big thing would be uh, if you're an Ohio State fan is trying to get J.K. Dobbins established. If, if Ohio State can run the football with Dobbins and Fields, that's when I think you'll see some potentially big plays in their passing game, um, especially on the road with Penn State's defense. Um, you, know, you, you all know how this stadium can come alive, and Penn State has struggled defending the pass this year. So if the running game gets going, I think that would be a, a big concern for Penn State and a great thing for Ohio State. And then like we just talked about with Chase Young, if, if, if Penn State is not able to get their own running game going and they're sitting back there at times, uh, it third down and long, that, that would be a disastrous position to be in. And K.J. Hamler's, to me, a little bit of an yeah. X factor. It's, they're being mum somewhat on whether or not his availability will be there or not. I think he will play. Uh, how effective, I think, remains to be seen. Because this kid, to me, he's probably the most electrifying player in college football this year. He's like a Deshaun Jackson or a Percy Harvin kind of guy. So uh, they got to hope that he's able to play. And, and, uh, and stay on the field for four quarters. Kirk, who is Ohio State's Heisman candidate? <clears throat> Um, Could they have two people there? Well, you know, the votes will decide that. You know, they, I think a lot of times people think ESPN decides that. The votes and the percentages and how it breaks down decides who will, in fact, get uh, invited. I would have thought if Chase Young didn't have his issue, mm -hmm. I think he would have been the, the obvious choice. I think at this point, you know, I, I think maybe Justin Fields. I, I think J.K. Dobbins could be the best back uh, in the country. I just don't know if he's getting the recognition or the carries in the second half to allow him to, to put up those numbers. Um, but at the end of the day, I think whoever goes off potentially against Penn State and Michigan and a Big Ten championship, I think could emerge as the guy, whether it's J.K. or Justin Fields. From a game day perspective, from a pregame show perspective, obviously this is the first year you've had true competition. Has that had to alter any of the things you do show-wise or is it just no change and just kind of compete for those that yeah, I mean, we, we, we've been doing this show for a long time, um, have a lot of confidence in what we've been doing and what we continue to do. Um, you know, our ratings are probably the best they've been in years. So I, we don't, I mean, respectfully, we don't really think much about anybody. We just continue to kind of raise the bar and do the best that we can. What is it about this game that is such a draw, again, for all of the um, I think it's just what's at stake. You know, you've got an Ohio State team that's trying to 
to make a, a serious run to a Big Ten championship and potentially a playoff. And people forget that you know Penn State can find a way to win this game uh, and still have a chance to get to a Big Ten championship. I mean, they think that they have a shot also to to, uh, to get to the playoffs. So when you have two teams in the middle of the latter part of November with so much at stake in a big conference like the Big Ten, I think people were excited to see what happens. Kirk, have you seen any of, of Urban's stuff that he's done with, with Fox? I know it's a different network, but have you seen that? And what do you make of his transition from the sideline? I think to... he's doing a good job. I mean, he, he obviously he had a chance to work at uh, ESPN for, for a couple years and was really good when he did that. We used to use him from time to time. Um, you know, in the national championship, he would, he would help us. And so it's a natural transition, I think, for any coach at his level, uh, like a Nick Saban type of guy. You know, he helps us out from time to time. And, yeah, but he's naturally doing a really good job. And, um, I, I, you know, he and I are good friends, and I, I wish him nothing but all the success. Out, out of all the places you guys travel, is Columbus any different, or, and if it is, why is it different? For me, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's nostalgic. It's it's. I was just on the set doing a Sports Center head, and I was sitting there because we sometimes we're not in this location, and I haven't been back here in a while. And you know, you, I, I have four boys. I can remember when my twins, who are 19 now, were little guys sitting on LeBron James's lap, who was our celebrity picker, and they were four or five years old. So, um, yeah, it's crazy how the years kind of stack up and different memories and thoughts go through your mind. So yeah, it's always special to come back to Ohio State and, and to be here in Columbus. Who's the celebrity picker then? Uh, I think it's Eddie George uh, who's coming back. And of course, we're moving in on the field for the last uh, hour of the show. So um, he'll be he'll be on the field with us for uh, the last segment. Ohio State has another big game next week. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But if, if, if they were to win this game, you know, in the old days, if you didn't beat Michigan, if you kind of ruined your How about season. That? If they win this game. But, it, but that isn't necessarily the case yeah. anymore. Does the football playoff at all diminish that rivalry? I think the playoff is diminishing a few things. Um, the biggest being, you know, the traditional bowls that, that people from my generation really look forward to and, and value. Now you have players skipping and saying, ah, we're only in the Sugar Bowl or we're only in the Rose Bowl. And they're skipping these games, which for all of us is kind of like, whoa. You know, what are you talking about? So, yeah, I mean, now all of a sudden, if Ohio State beats Penn State, they're automatically into Indianapolis. And if they were to lose to Michigan, theoretically, because the they've right been way, so, probably. yeah, in a close game, because they've been so good all year, they go and, and win in the Big Ten Championship. They're going to the playoff. Now, I don't think Ryan Day is going to have a hard time getting his guys, obviously, motivated to go win the game. But it, it, I think it does kind of take a little bit away from what that game is supposed to mean you know there have been times when the playoff wasn't there and if you won the game or if you lost the game it didn't matter you're still a big 10 champion if michigan might have a down year but there aren't a lot of examples so yeah it's a little bit it's just the era we live in we all i guess we all have to accept it but uh it's a little bit frustrating you probably couldn't ever really win a national championship though if you were right lost to michigan right now you can't now, now the playoff right. keeps you that, that door open for sure and i think the fact they haven't had any close calls you know, they, they've, they've been so dominant. Like, I, I don't know, they've had a couple slow first quarters, but for, for 60 minutes, there's not another team in the country that you can say has done what they've done on both sides of the ball. And so to me, that's why if they were to trip up in Ann Arbor, they should be rewarded still. Are they one of the best four teams? I mean, how can you say they're not? And now, if they go to Ann Arbor and get beat 34 to six, maybe that's not the case, but it's hard to imagine you know the way they played that happening. When you watch Justin Fields, um, what in, in what areas does he kind of met your expectations? So what did you see from him that you didn't think he was as good as he is? Um, you know, when a guy comes in with that kind of hype, I guess your your expectations are so high. And then when you think about Ryan Day and what Ryan Day can do with a quarterback, I I think we've just seen the beginning of who he is. Like I, I'm not. I mean, he's a potentially Heisman candidate, and yet I still think he's growing immensely. And his future, like when we watch him next year, uh, providing they still have great skill and great backs and great line, because that's that's really helped him. I think he potentially could go to a whole nother level that we're not even familiar with, because of his ability to run and throw. You know, Dwayne was a great quarterback, but he was a passer, threw 50 touchdown passes. I think defending Ohio State last year. First defending Ohio State this year. I much rather defend them last year 
as good as Haskins and those receivers were compared to this year because it's so hard to defend a dual threat quarterback. So he's about where I thought he would be, but I think uh, his future is frightening. Kirk, uh, Joe Burrow is obviously another yeah. trophy candidate from Ohio State. Yeah. Ohio State fans still seem to root for him. You yeah, isn't that weird? He's yeah. a former player, but they don't seem to feel scorn. Like Justin uh -huh. Fields came from Georgia. I don't think Georgia fans are probably right. rooting for Justin Fields. Well, the almost same all way. these. I think Jalen Hurts might be an example of a guy that left the school and is still revered. But I, I Joe Burrow still, his fingerprint still works at the Woody. You know, I, I don't know how many guys leave a school and he can still go back to his old school and put his index finger in and be able to walk into a weight room. I think it's how, yeah, I think it's how he went about it. I think that's probably the reason. Um, he was very upfront. He was very classy in the way he did it. And I think Ohio State coaches and players and fans just appreciate the way he went about it. He didn't, you know, it wasn't a I'm out of here kind of thing. It was more of a, you know, I love Ohio State, but I got to go try to find an opportunity for me where I can go play. And I think people just respected the, the, the uh, not that he left, but how he did it. Did that surprise you? Because this fan base can be tough on people. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I, I don't, I don't, I think if he would have done it in a different fashion, I think they would have probably turned on him pretty quickly. But I think when you hear the Ohio State coaches talk glowingly about a player, and his teammates talk the same way, it's hard for then the fan base then to say, yeah, but he left. I, I think they just kind of fell right in line with kind of the narrative that came from the from inside the locker room. Seems like to me. Kirk, Last when, you, one? when you hear SEC bias in college football. Well, What's kind of your response to that as a national guy? I, man, I, I watch more film than probably anybody of, of the Pac-12 all the way across the country. I just say what I think. Like, I don't, I really don't get caught up in ESPN has an SEC bias. I, you must not watch or listen if you think that because all we really do is, I mean, have you heard us talk about Ohio State? Um, so I, I think people hear what they want to hear believe what they want to believe and once you come to terms with that just keep working and keep talking you know but I I've never had anybody um, in 24 years tell me hey we really need you to talk about the SEC ever no one ever says that so you study film you talk and by the way they're a good conference so you talk good about good teams so Ohio State we talk good about Purdue not so much it's just kind of how it works so if you have a good team and a good conference, nationally, people are going to talk about you. Perfect. Thanks, guys.